Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalli from CK Research, and I am joined today by Jonathan Rosenberg, the head of AI and CTO for Five Nine. Uh, John, how you been doing? I'm doing great, Zias. How are you doing? Good, good. It's uh, it's hard to believe it's uh, almost the end of December. Uh, the year has rolled by. Yes. And uh, I think it's safe to say in our industry, we had a lot of change. Yes. And, uh, which which is good because I think as you and I have talked about, this industry certainly need to change. Yeah. Now. Um, this is the time of the year where uh, folks like myself and yourself give predictions. I've already seen a lot of 2025 predictions, but since you're the visionary for 5.9, I'm not looking for near-term predictions from you. Uh, I want you to put your thinking cap on and give me like your 2030 predictions of what we're going to see in AI and uh, in CX and specifically yeah. with to do with AI. And so, uh, John, uh, I'm going to pass the uh, torch over to you and uh, hear what you got. All right. I appreciate that because 2030 makes this a lot more fun, right? A lot more fun, a lot more impactful, and lets us sort of draw the lines from where we are today to like what's going to really make a difference, right? All right. So, so all right, I'll start with my first, okay? My first prediction is that we actually finally see the end of the contact center agent job as we know it today. But more importantly, and where I want to focus is, is a new role rises from its ashes, which I'm calling brand ambassador. And it's a role that businesses love and can't get enough of them, right? And it requires a different set of skills than agents today. And it's a job only possible due to generative AI. So what what is this job that I'm talking about? So the way this, you know, and, and listen, in the industry days, you know, we've been talking about like, moving jobs uh, or automation or AI replacing human labor for a long time. And it's sort of been yeah. the ambition to some degree of the industry with, with some success, but far from, I think, where we all hoped it could be. With generative AI, we're going to sort of be able to make that big leap and create this new role. And what this new role is about is it's allowing brands to sort of use generative AI itself to take the vast number of conversations and transactions happening online and use Gen AI to distill them down to what I call like real-time leads, like just these moments of opportunity where, you know, if a human were in the loop right now and we're able to step into this interaction online, this conversation online currently that doesn't involve the human, we'd be able to take something that ends up with an an abandoned shopping cart and turn it into a closed sale online. Mm. Uh, so, so So this is ultimately a sales job. And I say it's only enabled by Gen AI because today you think about like a contact center agent, it's very reactive. Meaning a customer calls in and says, yeah, I want to speak to someone about sales or I'm unhappy. So the consumer is picking when to engage with the human. In this model, it's completely inverted. It's, it's proactive. The brand is picking when to connect the agent, the person, the brand ambassador with the consumer based on all this information about like, okay, well, they're online shopping, you know, they were about to book a flight. They were talking to the chat bot, but they stepped away and, you know, they didn't respond and, and you know, something like this. So we said, now is a good moment to come in and like close this deal on that vacation they were about to book. So yeah, I'm glad you brought, I'm glad you brought this one up because, uh, you know, last year in, in Davos, the World Economic Forum, WEF issued a report saying that 85 million jobs would go away because of AI, but they predicted 97 would be created. Right. And I've asked people like yourself, well, and people cite that data all the time. And I ask them, well, yeah. what are those jobs that are going to be what created? Exactly. Yeah, cause, and and uh, you're the first person that's actually given me a job that is in some ways uniquely AI, right? And created because of that. So uh, I think there's a lot of fear and trepidation in the industry with AI that jobs are going away. And I think to your point, they will, but we have the opportunity to create a whole bunch of new jobs. And that's been the trend in technology. Now we, we, we displace old jobs and create new yeah. ones. I mean, Sam, if you want to think about it, you and I both have jobs that basically didn't exist, I don't know what, like, you know, 10, 20 years ago, maybe, that these yeah. jobs didn't exist in this their current form. And it's kind of like that. And I, and I like this brand ambassador one because it's something businesses want. Like today, the contact center agents use a cost center. It's something like it's a drag on the business. Everyone wants to cut it. But but businesses always want more salespeople. Like, and if we could fill the funnel with leads, I'd like as many salespeople as could handle these leads. So this is creating a new type of sales role based on a new type of lead. And it's not just sales, it's also churn reduction. And same idea, like, 
you can imagine these brand ambassadors get proactively pushed into these online interactions based on real risk of customer churn and unhappiness. So, you know, listen, the bot can self-service. We're not going to have, they're not doing password resets and all that. Like that's long gone. Yeah. Consumers are able to get it done with the bot. It's just that we want to put a human in here to get an extra outcome because I still believe in the power of human touch for things like this. Um, and I think the AI is going to help these people be very effective. So that's prediction number one. Okay. New Pre job, brand ambassador in five years, largely replace contacts in our region as we know it today. Yeah, and I think that job would be a lot more fun for that agent too versus recent. Yeah. So, exactly. okay, yeah. uh, agents go away, the rise of the ambassador. Prediction number two, John. All right, prediction number two. This is the most interesting one, I think, in my opinion. There's a battle looming in the future for which vendor or vendors are going to be the provider of this new con con customer experience we're talking about that's going to be enabled by Gen AI. Um, and we've got startups. Like I, I tell the joke, like you, you can't throw a rock in Silicon Valley without hitting three contact center AI CEOs on the head. Like there's tons of startups. There's CCAS vendors like Five9, CRM, marketing automation. Everyone's making a play for this. Who's going to win? Who's going to be the leading vendor? You'll be yeah. unsurprised by my prediction that it's <laughs> the CCAS vendors, but I'm going to give you three big reasons why. Right? Okay. There's the, and, and this is the stuff that's very near and dear to my heart is it keeps me up at night. Like I, I, I worry about this problem for five, nine, like how do we win when everyone is making a play for this? So I think it's going to be the CCAS vendors. Let me quickly give you the three big reasons. First of all, it's not an all or nothing space. There's other markets where it's like that. I don't think that's like that. So this, there's going to be a share for all of us, but I think we're going to see CAS and 5.9 are going to get the biggest. Why is that? Reason number one is actually multimedia. Hmm. Now, and when I say that is like, everyone's talking about chatbots, but if you look at where it's going, it's this combined audio, video, text, chat, all in one. Like all the vision videos from OpenAI and Google show hmm. people walking around with their phones and cameras and pointing at things and talking to it and sending it messages and it's sending information back while speaking. Like that's the modality people are envisioning. And that's a modality that's ultimately the most effective, right? Because it's the most natural way people communicate. Why does this matter is chat is easy. Voice and video and real-time communications are hard. And the platform vendors that are able to do all of those things and connect to consumers with telephony and video and all the rest of it across mobile phones and desk phones and everything, every other way people want to communicate, they're going to have a leg up in this multimedia future. So that's a CCAS guy, reason number one. Reason number two, conversation history, right? We need lots of data to train the AI. The data that's traditionally been the hardest to get at, that's still the hardest to get at, that's the most important, is the history of my conversation, my chat transcripts, my voice transcripts, my email history across everything from bots to humans, the whole nine yards, which platform controls that data? TCAS. A lot of the rest of the data you need already exists, already available and been accessed for a long time. This one's the hardest. That's reason number two, conversation history. Last reason number three is silo busting, cross silo integrations. For these self-service AI to be most effective, it has to be able to get data from and, and do anything you want has to talk, be able to, like, again, if we look at the airline, talk to reservation systems, uh, it has to be able to talk to loyalty programs. It has to, um, you know, be able to access data and knowledge about flights and airports and, uh, you know, sky lounges and all this kind of other stuff. So you got to plug into tons of different data systems across the entire business and a siloed solution won't do that well. Well, Connex Center in particular has been really strong in these horizontal plays that plug into all these different systems and therefore, they're going to be able to produce the most flexible and rich uh, subservice system. So that was a little bit long. But in summary, CCAS is going to have the biggest share. Why? Multimedia, conversation history, and horizontal cross-silo integrations. Yeah. And uh, my take on that is I, I, uh, I like the prediction because I think for the most part, when brands talk about customer journey, They've historically only talked about their little portion of the customer journey, right. sales, marketing, and service, front end, web analytics, things like that. And I think the the multimedia part, I think, is something that is interesting because you know there's been predictions for years that 
the CRM vendors would move into becoming a full contact center vendor. But I've always said, no one wants to run a global voice network. Right? Yeah. That's, they haven't that's, done it. They haven't it, done it. it. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's really difficult to do. And so I do think that the, there does need to be some consolidation of customer, the, at least the view of customer journey. And so um, uh, I'll accept that premise that the CCAS vendors will win because of those reasons you gave. So, exactly. uh, okay, prediction three. All right, all right. Prediction number three, okay, is also super interesting, right? Which is... Um, uh, the and it sort of comes falls from the rest of them, which is we're going to take a complete 360 on bots, right? Which is today consumers will tell you they they hate them, like that's be totally honest. They don't like them. They want to speak to a live agent. And what we're going to do is in the next five years we're going to completely flip that around. So customers actually prefer the bot. And when I say that, I mean they prefer it over two other things. They prefer it over talking to a live human. And more shockingly, you're ready for this they prefer it over using the rest of the website. And the way to think about it is we're gonna do that by flipping it around. Today, you think of the chat bot being this little button on the bottom right, like everybody has a little button we do too on the bottom right of the website that brings up the little chat bot. So the chat bot is inside the website. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the website inside the chat bot so that you're able to have this conversation history, this conversation with this bot but it's not just chat, it's serving you like bits of multimedia content. Like for example, you wanna book an air, a book a flight, right? So you're chatting with the bot, you're talking about different flight options. It's agentic, it's doing analysis on different flight options and airports. The stuff that today is very tedious on the webpage. Like if I wanna figure out like what day, what hour, you know, what flight is the right thing based on my connections, then my, you, it's like a, like a lot of work I gotta do. Remember back in the day, you used to go to a travel agency and you could ask them and they yeah, would do yeah. this work for you, right? You just have a conversation with them, describe your constraints. They would analyze all the flights. They would come back with the two recommendations. So we're going to get that from the bot. That's why consumers are going to prefer the bot. And then the content, like, okay, well, here's your flight options. It'll show up in the chat and you'll pick the one you want. So great, which seat, you know, I suggest this one, you'll get your seat picker inside the experience with the bot. So you'll get the power of an agentic system driven by conversation with the rich multimedia content and click, you know, quick click and action from the web page all inside the bot. And when we do that, it'll drive customer preference. So that's my third prediction is they're gonna completely flip it around. Consumers are gonna prefer the bots. They're gonna be more effective. And we're gonna basically put the website in the chat bot instead of the chat bot inside the website. Yeah, I, I love this prediction, and it's because uh, that uh, mirrors a lot of what I've been saying. In fact, I just emailed one of the publications, a uh, prediction of my own, that said in 2025, I think consumers will start to prefer virtualization chatbots for simple tasks anyways. And uh, I know there's a lot of skepticism around that, but I I roll back the clock and look at other technology transitions we, what we went through. You look at the banking industry, for instance, at one time, I remember people saying no one's ever going to deposit money in an ATM, right? Yeah. It's, it's too it's too risky. You know, you got to trust the person. And then mobile check deposits came out. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Who would ever deposit? He's never going to do that. I that's know. your phone. And now there's not a bank around that would exist without any kind of online banking or mobile transactions. And I I do think the there is that healthy skepticism, Jonathan, because chatbots have been terrible in the past. But I yeah. think the infusion of generative AI, yeah. agentic AI, you know, natural language processing, all these things have just made them better. And I think the, in some ways, um, the interactions with them are identical to people. Like you can interrupt them. You can talk with one exception. You never get put on hold. Yeah. And, they, and they always come back with responses right away. Exactly. And I think there will be a day and time when you contact the brand and when you get a human, you go, ah, you know, for this, I really just wanted to talk to a, uh, you know, to a bot or a virtual agent. And I, I think we're, I actually don't think we're that far from that. So. No, we're not. And there's some evidence, like yep. this would be difficult to accept this prediction if there weren't some evidence for it. the evidence is the consumer world, right? Because if we look at just, just look at chat GPT, right? People love talking to that thing. Before yeah. chat GPT, we never had a bot that can, in the consumer world, people love talking to. Now we do. So why wouldn't we think we're just gonna, all we need to do is take that same core experience and put it into the enterprise and we can. So there's evidence we can, that the tech exists now. Now we just need to spend the next five years applying it in the business and bringing this goodness.
The way I've characterized it, by the way, you talk about never on hold. It's like having your own personal concierge back, right? It's like you have your guy at the travel, you know, that's yeah. travel. You have your personal health concierge, right? That like, they're always there for you. They know you, they have all the information for you. They're able to answer any questions, do anything you want, kind of complicated tasks that would take you a long time. Why wouldn't you want that? That's yeah. what like rich people pay humans for. Now we can bring it to the masses. And there's an interesting thing too, is that if you look at the a history of a lot of innovation technology, it's taking something that only the super rich could afford and making it available to everyone or making the concierge available to everybody. All right, so three predictions to recap. We've got, um, uh, the first one was the um, the the agents, uh, agents Agent disappear, role. Yeah. Yeah. right? But we, it gives rise to the brand ambassador. Yeah. Uh, yeah. CCAS becomes the platform of choice for yeah. your uh, broader CX transactions. Yeah. And then uh, uh, people start to prefer chatbots over people. Exactly right. All right, John. Anything else you want to add? No, sounds great. Looking forward to make it happen. And I'm here. This is my, it's not just my prediction. It's my job. I'm here to make it happen. <laughs> That's what we're doing. All right. Tonight. Well, you heard it, for, you heard it from uh, Jonathan Rosenberg, head of AI for uh, and CTO for 5.9. So, uh, thanks for spending the time, John. I hope you have a happy holidays. Yep. And uh, and I'll, I'll see you sometime in the next year. So on behalf of Jonathan Rosenberg, I'm Zias Caravallo from ZK Research. And thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast. Mm -hmm.